Uh, good morning again. Happy to be here this morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Some of y'all uh, have noticed, I've got, uh, you may have noticed last night, I got like some earbuds hanging out. Uh, I record these. Thomas, Emily, I'm so glad. You, can I have a hug real quick? I'm so glad you guys are here. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here. Let's go for a hug. Oh, mouthful. Otherwise, Thanks. I would say hello. Okay, good morning, good morning. I'm so glad you're here. All right. Anyway, uh, some of y'all may notice like, Right before service starts, I'm like messing with my phone and my earbuds and whatnot. And it's because I record these messages. And so this just makes it easy. So please don't be distracted by the fact that I'm like yanking my phone out right before service. And everybody's telling you not to have your cell phones on. It's just so I can record the service. And then, I t- hey, this is where my hat goes. Did y'all notice Mr. Freaky yesterday wore his hat crooked like me? So boom. All right. Um, let's be honest for just a second before we get started. Do you have your cell phone with you? No. If you've got, besides you, <laughs> advisors and guides and whatnot, I think you guys are kind of supposed to hang on to it for emergencies or whatever, but if you're not one of those, if you're a summer staff, support staff, whatever, or a support crew, rest of the crew, if you have your cell phone with you, just please turn it off for the service so you're not even thinking about it, you're not distracted by it during the service. And then remember, when you go, anytime you go back to the outposter later on, or especially tomorrow when you come back to work, Leave that in your room, okay? Anyway, let's jump right in. we got a whole bunch to cover today. Not really. It's really not going to be that long. But I want us to go ahead and turn to Hebrews 6, 9 through 20. If you're taking notes, please write that down. If you've got your Bibles, go ahead and turn there with me. I'd actually like us to kind of uh, read corporately together. So we're going to read that. uh, Hebrews 6, 9 through 20. Can I have anybody wearing a green shirt on the front row stand up for two seconds here? Give me just a second. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. Our theme verse this year is what? Hebrews 6? 19. 19. If y'all haven't noticed yet, the shirts are printed wrong. Yeah. Well, then. Please don't let it throw you off. Thank you. Well, <laughs> Our theme verse, you can sit down. No, you're the man. Thank you. <laughs> it's all right. I just want everybody to see the back of the shirt. It says 618. It's actually 619. It's been said, we're all good now, okay? So we're going to read the kind of the half chapter leading up to that verse for context. In fact, uh, anytime I'm preaching, we're going to read that every single service right before we start. Hebrews 6, 9 through 20. I encourage you guys to really dig into that and think about that chunk of scripture as we move throughout the summer. Uh, what I like is about um, 11 volunteers who have a Bible. If I did my math right. All right, go ahead and stand up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, yes, ten. Yep. Uno mas. Por favor. One more with the Bible. You want to do the second one? All right, you can do the second one. Cool. What we're going to do is we're going to read Hebrews 9. You need to be at Hebrews 9. Uh, we're going to read Hebrews 9, or uh, 6. 9 through 20, and what we'll do is we'll start with one person, so you'll read 9, 10, and we'll go to you, etc. I'll kind of point at y'all so we don't get confused, okay? Uh, and then you'll hit the last two, okay? So, 9, whenever you're ready. Okay. Now, loud and proud, so everybody can hear you. Okay. Y'all know I can do that. <laughs> uh, though we speak in this way, yet in our case, beloved, we feel sure of better things, things that belong to salvation. God is not unjust. He will not... Forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. And we desire each of you to show the same earnestness, to have the full assurance of hope until the end. So that you may not be sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. For when God made the promise to Abraham, which he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself. Six fourteen, Hebrews six, fourteen. Okay, I will certainly bless you, and I will multiply your descendants beyond numbers. Then Abraham waited patiently, and he re- received what God had promised. For people swear by something greater than themselves, and sometimes are converted by the things they wish to do. Because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of His purpose very clear to the hearers of what was promised, He confirmed. It was an oath. God 
did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who had fled to take a hold of the people You're fine, you're fine. Hope set before us may be may be gradually encouraged. We have this hope is is an anchor for the soul firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain. Where Jesus has entered as a forerunner for us, having become a high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Thank you guys, you can sit down. All right, so there's a lot of context going on there. What I want to talk about, I touched on it very briefly last night. Last night I had to run through a really big chunk of, of the Bible. I really wanted to kind of lay out God's master plan through time. Um, and so now we're really going to zero in on certain things. And then we're going to talk about how chapel's going to run, how Bible studies are going to run. Thomas, if you want to talk for a minute or two on kind of how your thing's going to run, you can do that too. Um, let's clue in on a few things. First off, uh, in the beginning, God... Uh, walked and talked in the garden with Adam and Eve, right? Relationship. Man fell. Relationship kind of died at that point until a man named Abraham came along. Abraham talked with God. Abraham believed God. Abraham had a relationship with God. Does that make sense? Everybody following? Now the promise that was given to Abraham, which we just read about a second ago in Hebrews 6, that God said, I will bless you and I will multiply you. Okay? I'm going to make your name great, and you will be a blessing. You, in turn, will be a blessing. You don't need to worry about blessing yourself. I'm going to do that. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to protect you. God said later on in chapter 15 of Genesis that I am your shield and your very great reward. I'm going to take care of you. You're going to be a blessing. Okay? That was relationship. That was God talking to somebody. That was God relating to a man on the basis of nothing but faith, nothing but belief. The choice to believe was all it took for Abraham to get that. Later on, we already talked about that. After exiting Egypt, the people of Israel came to a point where they didn't want to believe in God. You see, the relationship with God up to that point had been very inheritance-driven, promise-driven. Does anybody know what what an inheritance is? Has anybody here ever received an inheritance from a, a grandparent or something like that? Yeah, 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 absolutely. My grandpa died, uh, I don't know, it's been a while, when I was 14, I think. Uh, my dad's dad died when I was 14. And he, had, he wasn't doing well up to that point, you know, so he kind of knew things were coming along. So he'd already written his last will and testament. And in that will, he named a couple of things. One of them was an executor, somebody who was going to make sure that his will, his last wishes were followed correctly. And then he named a whole bunch of his stuff and who it was going to go to. Now, the lion's share of it went to the lion's share of it, went to um, uh, his wife, but a lot of it went to his two sons and his three grandchildren, of which I was one of them. And it was really cool, even though it, it, one of the things that I inherited was a, an old 22 rifle. Um, it, I, I mean old. This thing my grandpa used when he was a kid. Uh, it's a single shot. You've got to put the cartridge in because there's no, there's no magazine. So you have to load the bullet on your own, put it in, and then cock the, the pin every time you shoot it. Uh, the wood, you feel it, and you can just feel the age in this thing. It's almost soft because it's been used so much. It's got all these rubs in places because, you know, back in the day when my grandpa was growing up, uh, he'd have to go hunting, and this was all they could afford, a tiny little twenty two rifle. And sometimes if he didn't find anything, they didn't get to eat. And so this was his life. This gun was his life, and it was something that I got to inherit from him. And it was kind of sad that he died, but every time I shoot that rifle, I get to remember my grandpa. I remember times I spent with him and things like that. And that's how inheritance works. <clears throat> that when somebody dies, it passes along to the next person. And that's how the promise from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob to the 12 sons of Israel Uh, and his two grandchildren. That's how it worked. It was promise that moved from generation to generation. If you read the last two chapters of Genesis, uh, which is 49 and 50, you'll see Israel passing that promise along to the next generation, to his his kids and his two grandkids. Oh, you got close, man. (laughs) You'll see that, passing along the promise to kids and grandkids. That's how the promise worked. But when it got to the point of the law, no more inheritance. 
no more relationship. When we talked a little bit last night, Moses, when he went to go talk to God, when he come out of what was called the tent of meeting, when he come out of the tent of meeting, he would have a glow on his face. And the people of Israel didn't want to see that. So they said, hey, put a veil on. Y'all might notice that your shirt theme is beyond the veil. We're getting to that. They said, put a veil on. We don't even want to see the residual effect of what you look like after you've talked to God. That veil was a type and shadow of one that would later be built into a tent and then a temple where God's presence was separated from his people. And this wasn't just a, you know, when we say veil, you you have a tendency to think of like a piece of sheer fabric, right? You know, something you can kind of see through. It's semi-opaque, right? Right? This curtain was super thick. It was a big, thick heavy curtain. Yes, yes, exactly. It was, a, it was a big, thick, heavy curtain. Now, the purpose of that curtain was to keep God and people separate. What was, the, what was the reason for that? Why was that necessary? It was necessary. It didn't used to be. God used to just talk to Abraham, but something had come into effect. Why was it necessary to keep God and, and the people separate? Sorry? Sin. Sin. Sin, exactly, the law. The law empowered sin. The law set a standard for behavior. And if that behavior was violated, then that was a transgression. And that couldn't come into the presence of God. So that curtain was necessary in order to keep people out. Now, there was one person who got to go behind the veil. Originally, it was Moses, but later on, it became the high priest. Whoever was the high priest that year could only go behind the curtain once a year, and that with a, a string of rules and regulations as to how he'd do it and how long he could be back there. And, the, and it was the presence of God back there is a very powerful force. We take it for granted now because it's with us everywhere we go. But it was a very concentrated, powerful force. And people were scared that the high priest would die when he bit, went back there once a year. Can you imagine if your job was being the high priest? You're a priest. You're doing your thing. Eventually you become the high priest and you're like, oh, I got to go behind the veil. One person, only one person ever really knew what was behind there. Only got to see what was behind there, experience that presence of God. And only once a year. And they were so scared that that guy would die. They'd tie bells around his feet and a rope to his leg. So if he stopped jingling, they could drag him out. Because sometimes if you didn't follow all the rules and regulations, that man would die. That veil is really what we're talking about tonight. What's behind the veil? Your theme is beyond the veil. We learn later on in the New Testament that the veil was torn. Uh, specifically, if you want to make a note, it's Mark 15.38. There's several references, but Mark 15.38 is one of my favorites. It was really interesting. When we were visiting uh, me and uh, Cam and Zach and, and the rest about theme uh, this year, uh, they were talking about potentially doing a beyond the veil theme. And I was like, that's pretty cool. I like that. Um, And I was going over my notes from last year. Uh, Some of y'all might remember uh, the few of y'all that were around last year. Uh, On the inside of my binder, I had a series of sticky notes just on random stuff, of random notes and things that I'd taken. And I was like, this is good. I might use this later on. And I just stickied it to the inside of my binder. One of them was the word that's used in that verse in in, in uh, 1538. The Greek word uh, for torn is shizo, which doesn't mean, you know, here, I'm just going to undo my paper ball. I hope I don't have to use it. People have a tendency to, when they hear that the veil was torn, here's what we think of. That's not what happened. The veil was not neatly, calmly torn. It was rent asunder. That's what the word means. Torn, never, ever, ever to be made whole again. You can't repair this. You can't sew it back together. Ripped apart. What was behind there? We'll find out later on the summer. The interesting thing, though, is in 1 Corinthians we learn we get to go beyond the veil. That we get to enter boldly into the presence of God. That's our theme. That's what we're going to talk about this summer. I'd encourage you guys to please spend a little bit of time memorizing your theme verse. It's one verse. It's 619. So, But it's Hebrews 619. It's only one verse. It doesn't take long to memorize. You've probably heard it a dozen times in your life. You've probably got half memorized already. So 
take a little time to memorize that. What I want to do now is talk about uh, how services are going to run, how chapel is going to run, how your Bible studies are going to look. Basically, your spiritual discipline throughout the summer. Okay? Number one, uh, chapel. Chapel is going to take place every Sunday morning except for Sunday fun day. Sunday fun day is June 23rd. Every Sunday except that Sunday. We will have chapel most likely in here. It does move around a little bit sometimes. That's okay. You'll find out. Most likely in here, uh, except for June 23rd, we will have chapel every day. I won't be talking every day. I'm going to talk the majority of the time, uh, but we are going to have several guest speakers. Brad's going to come back and preach one of them. Uh, Will is going to preach one of them. And a man named Nathan, is it Walsh? Welsh? Welsh. Nathan Welsh is going to preach another one. And then a really good friend of mine, uh, his name's Galen Hall. He's going to come out and he's going to preach one near the end of the summer as well. Uh, So I'll be doing the majority of it, but we're also going to get uh, some other people out here to talk to you guys, which is really great. Really, really great. I'm excited about that. As far as chapel is concerned, I do expect you guys to show up ready to learn. I know it's early in the morning. Uh, most of the time you've been working all week and this is sometimes this is like the last day before you have an off day and so you're kind of tired, you've been, been working a lot. I expect you guys showing up ready to learn, ready, ready to receive. I love that you guys all have journals and all have notebooks and all have stuff to write with. Please bring those with you along with your Bible. Now it's not a deal breaker if you forget your Bible, but I would prefer that you have it. That way we can do this corporate reading. I really enjoy doing that where we all kind of get to share our reading time together. There's a verse in 1 Peter that says, therefore prepare your minds for action. That's really what I want to drive into you guys for for every Bible, anything this summer. Prepare your mind for action. We've restructured a lot of what we do during the summer in terms of Bible studies and uh, assignments and devos and things like that. We've restructured a lot of it. And it's all really focused on your growth. We've been praying about this for over a year since last summer we really uh, drove in and kind of thought about and prayed about what would be best, how to best change these things. And in the past six months, uh, I know I've been working on it, Thomas has been working on stuff, Cam's been working on stuff, Zach's been working on stuff, Casey's been working on stuff, everybody's been working on stuff in order to get to the point where when you guys get here, you're going to have the best summer of your life. As far as assignments go, um, I have written two for you every week. So you're going to have an assignment. I think that Zach covered those in guest services on the back of the green sheet. Yes. Yeah, sweet. <clears throat> on the back of the green sheet, it's going to roughly equate to Wednesday and Saturday. It's roughly going to equiv- uh, you know, be Wednesday and Saturday, although some days it will be different. Okay? But every time they'll tell you, hey, there's an assignment on the back of this green sheet. Those assignments don't take long. They're, they're half a page each, okay? We're talking five minutes if you take a little bit of time with it. And all you got to do is flip it over, look up in your Bible a verse or two, read, maybe take a note or two, and you're done. That's all that takes, and there's only two a week. You guys can do this corporately. You can do it individually. Some of them are specifically written to be done one way or the other, so respect that. But other than that, If you're a programs person and you're out at Archery Tag and the service is running late and the afternoon service is running late and you've got five minutes, say, hey guys, let's do the assignment. Flip it over and the four, two, I don't know how many people run Archery Tag. I don't know anything. Two. One. Well, okay. Whatever. Flip it over and have a look at that assignment. You're at the pool. Kids are running late from the evening service for for a night swim or something like that. Hey, has everybody done it? No? All right, let's flip it over. Let's have a quick look. We got probably 10 minutes before campers show up. Plenty of time to look at that assignment corporately, okay? Some of the other things that you'll be doing throughout the week are Bible studies. You might have to help me a little with this, uh, uh, Thomas. There's a group Bible study where you'll be going through the book of uh, Micah. There is uh, individual Bible studies, which is the ones that I was just talking about. And then there is a boys and girls Bible study. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is prayer. Uh, you, praying before meals is great. Praying be- in, in the middle and all times through chapel is always great. But prayer is a lot more than that. Prayer is not just uh, an event. Prayer is a continual conversation. Okay, uh, stopping to pray corporately is a great thing. I think that Thomas is actually going to talk about this during some of his uh, some of his stuff. 
But prayer is a continual conversation. Right? God went through all that stuff that we talked about yesterday so that He could be with us all the time. So that we could talk to Him all the time. As you guys are moving throughout the summer, you're working. Uh, I'll just give you a quick story. Uh, my buddy of mine, we went camping. Me and my wife and a, a bunch of people went camping. Do that. Felt like nine years ago, but I think it was only three. Arkansas? Is that like three years ago? Or is it Oklahoma? Yeah, it was like three years ago. Feels like a million years ago. Um, but about three years ago, we went camping in Arkansas, and we were staying at this really cool place, and there was these cabins, and they had fences between them, and we were having water balloon launcher wars over the top of the fence and whatnot, and it was awesome. Um, and then, what, it was five years ago? Oh, whoa, okay, well, there you go. So, um, we're having these water balloon launching wars, and then we're like, okay, we got to clean, well, we got biodegradable things, but we were still like, let's clean up as much as we can, because... It might take a while for it to wash away. So we're like cleaning them up and then we tr- go to the other fin- side of the fence and we're cleaning it up. And we try to go back to the gate to get to the other side of the fence and I cannot get this gate latch to work. I don't know what was going on. I'm like, I just came through here and I can't make the stupid gate latch work. It's just stuck or something. I was like, I'm just going to walk around. It was like 50 yards to walk around. Or I could just go through this gate that's right in front of me, but I couldn't get it open. And I was like, I'm just going to walk around. I'm going to walk around. A buddy of mine was with me. Uh, his name's Frankie. He's super cool. Um, he's a missionary in the uh, in Key Islands? Something? He's a missionary in an island somewhere. Super cool guy. Anyway, uh, he's like, dude, let's pray. I said, okay, okay, let's pray. He said, dear Lord, please help us open this gate. Okay. And we opened the gate, and that was that. And I was just like, Like, I was willing to walk 50 yards to the other end of the fence, 50 yards back so I could get back to the house, and he just said, hey, wait, wait a second, let's pray. And what, it cost like five seconds, and even if it didn't work, five seconds to stop and talk to God, great. If you guys encounter any issues this summer, anything, find yourself getting a little frustrated, take a second and pray, two, three seconds. Stop, focus, pray, continue on. I also encourage you guys to prayer walk. If you, uh, I, I, Maddie, I was talking to this morning. Where'd you go, man? Not, not you, Maddie. The other one, the one that likes to walk. Where are you? There you are. <laughs> uh, you, you, did you say you were walking for like two hours last night before you went to bed? That's intense. <laughs> Kudos. But if you're going to be walking around campus at all, stop, uh, for a couple of seconds. Yeah, I mean, whatever. As you're walking around, pray a little bit. It's going to do a lot of good, okay? If you guys like to run, I know uh, we have some runners here. Some people that like to play soccer, you might, uh, you might run a little bit from time to time. As you're doing that, you know, you listen to your music, you're jamming, you're chilling out, but maybe take a, a, a lap or two and pray as you go. That's, man, guys, that does so much good for camp. It really does so much good for you, too. Um, pray for leadership as well. In a minute, we're going to divvy up into some groups and spend a little bit of time in prayer. Your leadership team here and the guides advisors is, are yes, but also your directors, Zach, uh, the board of directors that kind of govern the, the area here, um, Thomas, Taylor, uh, people that work in the office. I, I, can't, I can never remember her name, the lady that does data entry. Miss Helen. 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 Miss Helen. Everybody that works here. If you guys are going to stop and pray and you don't know what to pray for, pray for them. Pray for your leadership. Anybody on campus, pray for each other, please. But take a minute and pray for the people who are running the camp. Keep in mind that when you guys are gone, when you guys are gone, they run this camp on their own without all 70 staffers, okay? And they set up for summer. Summer's the the build up. So it's, whoop, we're doing summer retreat season. They're here to provide the structure that you guys get to function in. Pray for them, all of them. They're very, they're all super helpful. We're going to pray now, and then we're going to divide up into some small groups here uh, to do so, a little bit of prayer together in, in a little bit smaller groups. What I want to happen, I'm going to pray here just corporately for a second, and then I want you guys to divvy up into groups of two or three or whatever. Thomas, join whatever you want. Uh, I would like it all to be same gender, okay? Uh, so no co-ed prayer today, just uh, so a couple of guys, two, three guys, two, three girls, divvy up, spread around the room, and I want you guys to pray for a little bit. 
I know that not everybody's used to praying in, in what might feel like a kind of an intimate uh, setting, but I want you guys to think about what I just said. If you don't know what else to pray for, pray for some other people on camp. Pray for some of your fellow staff members. Pray for the leadership, okay? When that's done, be respectful and be quiet. There are other people that are going to be praying. Oh, advisors and guides, I'll take y'all, okay? Um, uh, but be respectful of the fact that other people are, are having a moment and be quiet and be, and be respectful of that. I believe we're back in the chapel after this uh, for some food service training. So if you guys, if you're finished and we're not done, if you want to step just outside the building and chat, that's fine with me as long as you're back in here at nine. Everybody got it? All right. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us together today. Thank you for being awesome. We pray that as we uh, move throughout the summer, that we remember why we're here and we remember the hope that brought us here, Lord. We start to think about the incredible sacrifice that you've made and, and all the things that were necessary in order to gain us not only salvation, but intimate, close relationship with you, Lord, and that we, we learn to press into that. got to pray for everybody here that you strengthen them mentally, physically, spiritually, in every aspect, in all aspects, Lord, that they be strengthened in you. got to thank you for supernatural energy, supernatural focus and discipline, and for just carrying off the best summer that Riverbend's ever had. In Jesus' name.